Let the high praise of God be in their mouth yes. and a two-edged sword in their hand. Let the high praise of God yes. be in their mouth yes. and a two-edged sword in their hand. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. Praise team just got finished singing hallelujah yeah. belongs to you. Yeah. You deserve it. Yeah. All the glory, all the honor. So let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. Thank you, Pastor Jay, for that wonderful introduction. <laughs> um, I want to first and foremost honor God, our source, Jesus, our Savior, and the Holy Spirit, our sustainer. I want to acknowledge today and honor your pastor, Pastor Jay Smith. And first lady, Minister K. Smith, yeah. let her know, send, I send my love to her, and let her know I miss her dear. And to the Smith family, the sisters, amen, thank God for you, amen, good to see you all today. They are my forever brother, sister, and family, amen. amen. And I want to acknowledge, amen, the honor of the ministerial staff, the official board and covenant disciples, so as you guess the whole church, and then gather in the sanctuary of those of the building, amen, in the virtual sanctuary. And I cannot forget my pastor, my covering, Bishop Ronald L. Holmes. And I the family who brought in that robbery to come and support me tonight. And so can my New Hope family stand Amen. and let Hope Church know and see you. Amen. Amen. And my sister Pastor Lord Lord is here as well. She's the sheriff is here. Deacon Fisher is, is agitating for me. And I, that's a first. And <laughs> so I feel special, Pastor. <laughs> Minister Sheila. And Trusty Robert is in the back. So thank you guys for being here with me, supporting me in Jesus' name. Yeah. And your pastor always camps a Bible class tonight so the church could be here. Amen. And so I'm just grateful and thankful to him. And so I greet you all with the, uh, with the joy of Jesus. And so if you're happy and you know, just clap your hands. <laughs> Come on, if you're happy and you know, clap your hands. To God be the glory for the things He has done, and so I am humbled and honored for the invitation to share uh, the good news of Jesus Christ, especially in this Lenten season. Our scripture text this morning will be coming from Psalms 85, verse six. Psalm 85, verse six, and I will be reading from the New Revised Standard Version. And the scripture reads as thus. Will you not revive us again so that your people may rejoice in you? Will you not revive us again so that, the pe so that your people may rejoice in you? Let us pray. Gracious and almighty God, we thank you for this space, this time, and moment to stand before your people. We present to you now our spirit, soul, and body. Hide me now behind the cross and let no flesh be glorified. We pray, O oh God, that you let your voice be heard, let your glory be seen, and your will be done. For I have studied, but I need your strength. I have prepared, but I need your power. I am willing, O oh God, but only you can make me able. In Jesus' strong name, our name above all names, we pray. And let all God's people say, Amen. 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 So with your prayers on tonight, I would like to preach from the subject, Revive Us Again. Yes. Amen. Revive Us Again. My dear sisters and brothers, our posture in this Lenten season must be that of preparation, anticipation, introspection, 
ref reflection, repentance, giving, fasting, and prayer. Then is the time when we all soften our hearts to the realities of the Spirit, to experience, to experience the power and presence of God to be manifested in our lives. I read somewhere that the sacrifice of Lent is not in the stomach, but in the heart. All right. And I cannot shake this feeling that God has more for us in this Lent season, not just individually, but as the body of Christ. As I was preparing to be with you tonight, I was going in one direction. However, I woke up early last Thursday morning, my mind fixed on these three short but powerful words, revive us again. Yeah. And the lyrics of that hymn playing in my head, we praise thee, O God, for the son of thy love, for Jesus who died and is now gone above. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Yes. Revive us again. Yes. What dead things are you dealing with right now? Mm. When something needs reviving, it presupposes that the thing that needs reviving has died. Mm -hmm. So I ask you again, what dead things are you dealing with right now? Has your passion for the Lord died? All right, my Lord, my Lord. Has your motivation died? My Lord. Has your witness died? Mm. Has your joy for life died? Mm. Is your bank account on hospice? Mm. <laughs> Tell the truth, shame the devil. You have been late for church because you scrolled on TikTok mm. and your fire for God has died. But how many know that dead things don't have to stay dead? All right. All right. You don't have to call Clinton Curry funeral home. Because we know a man from Galilee. Yeah. If you're in sin, you're set, you're free. Yeah. Do you know? Amen. Have you tried him? Ain't you all right. All right. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I want to be revived in my relationship with Christ. Yeah. Revived in my spiritual yeah. spiritual life. Revived in my personal life. Yeah. And revived in my church life. Yeah. In this Lenten season, we stand in need of a move of God that will revive us from the inside out. Yeah. Revive us again. Yes. Yes. Psalms 85 is a prayer for revival. Mm -hmm. This song is a national lament. The song coincides with the narrative in the book of Daniel that was a time of 70 years. God's people lived in a miserable and sinful place called Babylon as a result of their continual idolatry. Yes, yes. They were taken captive by the Babylonian king Nebuchadnezzar. And because they were sinful and disobedient to the Lord, yes, yes. their idolatry ranked highly amongst their many sins. God appointed a set amount of time for their captivity and restored them to their land after that time and they're crying out to God. God entered the situation after 70 years. Not only fulfilling prophecy, but also changing their situation according to God's promises to God's people. Yeah. Yeah. Although Psalms 85 is a national lament, it has personal implications. What happened to Israel can happen to individuals. Meaning we can find ourselves in miserable places because of our sin and our idolatry. Have you ever been in that place? Are you there now? If so, then you are in the right place. For a heaven sent, a Christ exalted, spirit led, gospel saturated, saturated truth driven, driven life changing, God glorifying, revival. Revive us again. I approached the text with four questions in mind. The first question I asked the Psalms was Who needs revival? According to the text, it is God's people that needed revival. The text in verse 6 says, will you not revive us? Yeah. Our text indicates that something happened. Yeah. Something has gone on. Yeah. Something has happened in the life of the community at Jerusalem after the exile, exile in Babylon. Yeah. This community was marked by opposition of hardships. The people saw themselves in great distress. Deliverance did not happen for them right away as they returned from the exile. And the glory of the Lord did not dwell in the land. 
other generations. And so here in our text, God's children had left their first love. They got cold and comfortable, comfortable in their salvation. They got cold and comfortable in their walk with the Lord. And as a result, they drifted into sin and rebellion. And so in order to make them realize what was going on and what they had done, God began to judge them. Yes, yes. Beloved, let me put it to you this way. Something has happened to the life of the church. Something has happened to the walk and the witness of those of us who have received the gift of eternal life. Let me help us tonight. It's not the prostitute or the politician. It's not the gambler or the grasping police. It's not the corrupt citizens or the crooked government. We are the ones that have gotten a little comfortable in God. A little complacent in God. A little cold in God. We act like God hasn't been mighty good to us. Here is when growth ceases and decay, decomposition and decline commences. Many of us aren't growing. And in the gospel, according to Lord Hill, anything not growing is dead. Every one of us by nature are dead in trespasses and sins. Every one of us need reminding. Let me say that again for the people that are taking notes. Every one of us need reminding. And so our prayer ought to be in this season, will you not revive me? I'm not talking about a revival where the sleeping folk wake up. I'm talking about a revival where the lukewarm fire up. I'm talking about a revival where the dishonest straighten up. I'm talking about a revival where the filthy clean up. I'm talking about a revival where the disgruntled sweeten up. I'm talking about a revival where the discouraged cheer up. A revival where the depressed look up. A revival where the silent speak up. A revival where the estranged wake up. A revival where the gossip will shut up. A revival where the dead beats pay up. disciples pray up. Yes. Lord, revive us again. Yes. The second question I ask the psalmist, why do we need a revival? Beloved, there are two reasons in the text that God's people called for a revival. First, there was wickedness and weakness in the camp that caused their exile. God's people had backslidden and the second, God's children had a, a slack in their devotion and service for the Lord. Mm -hmm. Their deficiency was about the result of their work. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but I remember a time in my life when I had better days. Yeah. Days of dedication. Yeah. Days of great expectation. Days of full commitment. Days of surrendering. Days of intentional prayer and fasting. Days of faithful Bible study and reading. Days of steady worship and thanksgiving. And days of consistent evangelism. Anybody remember those days? But like Paul's words in Galatians, ye did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? You didn't run well, who stopped you? You didn't run well, who blocked you? You didn't run well, who stopped you? And so we need revival for some things to be lifted up. We need a revival for some things to be lowered down. We need a revival for some things to be lined up. We need a revival for some things to be leveled out. We need a revival to renew our broken fellowship. We need a revival to restore our joy. We need a revival to Fresh our prayer life. We need a revival to rejuvenate our Bible study. Lord, we need a revival. When I was a chaplain in a hospital, we would get called to cold blues, which means someone's heart has stopped. They had a cardiac uh, event and they died. I would rush to the room to support the family. I could see the doctors and the nurses attempting to revive the patient. They used a defibrillator to get the whole heart system to return back to life. They would shout, clear! And everybody stepped back to allow the electrical current 
to shock the heart back to life. And just as it is in the natural, it is in the spiritual. Church, we need a cold blue. But I'm glad the Holy Spirit is a spiritual refrigerator with strong strength. Refueling our souls and recharging our hearts so we can be alive again. I choose to live. What about you? Lord, revive us again. The third question I ask the song is this. When do we need revival? My sisters and brothers, God's people need reviving. The text says again and again. It's, the text in verse 6 says, Will you not revive us again? Israel kept declining in their devotion to the Lord through defilement. And if they were faithful in serving the Lord, they needed to be recharged frequently to stay on the battlefield for the Lord. The word again is an adverb denoting the frequency. Again means another time, once more, repeatedly, often, frequently, recurrently, habitually, persistently, continually, over and over and over and over again. So let me suggest to us tonight that revival is not a one and done thing. But revival is needed over and over and over and over again. And so the time is now when God is enlisting an army of believers that will become fire bearers and fire carriers. Is that you? So I need to let you know that even the Levitical priest brought fresh wood to the altar of sacrifice over and over again. Even Jesus went before God in prayer over and over again to be revived and renewed for the ministry. My sisters and brothers, we have to be constantly revived. Revival is an uninterrupted, unbroken, unending, unchanged, and an unceasing fellowship. Revival is the church being the church. A church crying out for God to bring us together, bind us together, and breathe a fresh breath of life into our lives again, again, and again. Amen. So that we can be the church powerful and not the church powerless. Amen. Is there anybody here who wants to be revived? Amen. And if that's you, just raise your hand in the air and raise them like you just don't care. And you might stand on your feet and say, oh yeah! And so the fourth and final question to the psalm is, what are the results of revival? Sisters and brothers, the final stanza of Psalms 85 is a a sneak preview of coming attractions because the text says that your people may rejoice in you. The prayer is over. The psalmist is now speaking with great expectation that God will hear God's people, the God's people's prayer for revival. So rejoicing in God has a whole lot to do with the ending stanza. So the text says, "Let me hear what God, what God the Lord will speak, for He will speak peace to His people, to His faithful, to those who turn to Him in their hearts." Surely his salvation is at hand for those who 
gospel to the church. And before I rest my case, come here, Jesus. One Friday on a hill called Calvary, Jesus was crucified. He hung his head and his heart stopped. And he died for your sins and he died for my sins. And Friday night, no heart beat. All day Saturday, no heart beat. But early Sunday morning, Once you put another log on that fire, 
Oh, then that fire would get the oxygen necessary to fuel its burning. And so here tonight, I heard this preacher tell us to put another wall on the fire. Right. That the oxygen might catalyze that, 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 that it might cause your fire to burn even brighter and even hotter. Yes. And so I pray that each one of us would do just that. That we would allow the Lord to continue to revive us in this season. Yes. And that we will run on just a little bit longer to see what the end is going to be. And so again, I'm thankful to you, Reverend White, for that word that you shared here in this place. And I'm going to ask our bishop to come and, and greet us and give us some words. Um, you can't just come in the house and not say nothing to us. Uh, so come on up, bishop. Come on, let's give God some praise. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. We are so thankful to be in the house and surely for this wonderful and marvelous message from my daughter in faith. Amen. Will you give Pastor White another round of applause for allowing God to do that? We all need the Bible. Amen. Somebody. It is a special treat to be here with Pastor Jay and um, and the Smith sisters. Amen. Amen. Yeah, at least some of them anyway. But we thank God for him. He is a great pastor, a great theologian. Will you give your pastor a round of applause? Please? We are so thankful and I am so proud of him and the work that he is doing here at the Hope Church. His father-in-law and his mother-in-law, dear friends of mine for more than 50 years. Amen. Yes. Amen. And uh, we are thankful that he's carrying on the legacy and the vision uh, that was started here at the Hope Church. Can I say something to you tonight? Yeah. This Lenten season is not just something that is procedural, but it is definitely spiritual. Yes. Yeah. Lent is our journey with Jesus to the cross. Mm -hmm. To see the passion of our Lord and the suffering and the pain that he endured so that we might be set free. Mm -hmm. We do not take this journey lightly, but we do it solemnly and contemplatingly. As we think about our own mortality and uh, what we are, but whose we are. What we are is flesh, but whose we are makes us more than conquerors. But this is our time to look at ourselves. Uh, once upon a time we had a service and they called it, our ladies at New Hope called it a spiritual makeover. And this is our time to have a spiritual makeover. Yes. You and I look deep down inside of ourselves and to say to us, to our God, fix whatever is wrong, yes. enhance whatever is good, and allow us to travel closer with the Lord. And not only during this Lenten season, but hopefully when we get away from these 40 days, it will not be just 40 days but for the rest of our life dedicated to the Lord Jesus Christ. I am so happy to be here. I tried my best to stay out there and be quiet, <laughs> but um, I am just happy to be here. Can I tell, don't tell Pastor Jay this, please don't. But I sneak in on your services every Sunday. I'm watching and I am excited about what I see here at the Hope Church. So when you're worshiping and when you're praising, think to yourself, Bishop Owens is taking a sneak peek <laughs> at what's going on in the church. And I'm thankful to God that you are as exuberant and as excited with the ministry of God here at Hope Church as a witness in Downbrook and the surrounding areas. 
Yes, I'm in the parking lot with you. But some of your uh, affairs out there and inside. So I am so proud of what you are doing and what your pastor is doing here. And I pray constantly that God will continue to increase the work of the Hope Church. That all the world might know that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. Thank you for allowing me to be with you. Amen. I just want to, again, thank all who came tonight. I see you, Reverend Bullock, out there. Reverend Bullock is uh, part of the Middlesex Central Baptist Association uh, as its treasurer, and I served with him in that in that uh, that cabinet. So thankful to see you here tonight. God bless you. And our assistant uh, pastor at New Hope. And assistant pastor at New Hope. God bless. Amen. Amen. So thankful to have you here this evening. Uh, Pastor, I want to give you this token of our appreciation. It is just a love offering. We cannot pay you for what God has implanted in you, but we certainly want to bless you and we thank you for, again, accepting this invitation here tonight. Just to let you all know, before I bring our preacher back for final remarks and benediction, we do have a fellowship after, so please don't rush off. We have a light meal. Uh, we are keeping within the Lenten tradition, so we ain't got no fried chicken and, and <laughs> greens and mac and cheese and all that great stuff. Uh, but we do have something to help fill us up as we've been spiritually nourished. Now we can be physically nourished. So please don't rush out. Please stay a while uh, fellowship together. Um, so again, uh, we'll have our preacher come back. If you did bring a gift for the Lord, um, please leave it in the boxes here. Uh, at the entrances and exits, uh, if you did bring something for our preacher, uh, please make that out to her. If you wrote a check or just put it in her hand, uh, cash is always wonderful. Yes, um, we thank God for all of you again. So come on, preacher. Uh, final remarks. Bless our food. Bless our fellowship. And bless our gifts that are being left here today. Again, thank you, Pastor Jay, for... Uh, the wonderful invitation and allow me to come to share with you. Um, I love this church. <laughs> Every time I come here, I tell you guys that I love the people, I love the fellowship, I love the joy that exuberates um, from you guys. Um, I think I saw a young lady, as soon as she was coming, as soon as she walked through the door, she was. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> and, 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 and she, she, it take her no time. Take her no time to get it get into worship. And that's the way it should be. I know we have issues and troubles and things that want to get us down. That's that's what the enemy wants us to hold our head down. But the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. So let us remember this little season. Let us be true to it. Don't worry about your mess ups, your mess ups, because living is not about all that. Amen. Sometimes, you know, we can't do the food fast from TV, fast from sweets, fast from regrets, fast from uh, uh, stubbornness, fast from those things that you know that God is not pleased with. Amen. And so again, we want to thank New Hope uh, Baptist Church, the disciples, Pastor Bullock, Trustee Robert, Minister Sheila, Deacon, Deacon Berkeley, to my I'm a bear. I think I'm, I think I have passed that. I need to take him with me when I go out sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but again, thank you for your, your prayers and your support. So let us all stand. That's, that's Gracious and, and, and mighty God, as we come before you now, thank you, O oh God, for this time, this moment, and this purpose. Lord, we pray, O oh God, for the food that was prepared for us. God, we ask that you bless it and make it a uh, nourishment to our bodies. Bless the hands that, that prepared it for us. We pray, oh God, even tonight for those that are without. God, we ask that you make a way, provide the resources. We thank you, oh God, for Pastor Jay and Minister Kay. We thank you for their life. We thank you for how you're bringing them up. We thank you, oh God, for friendship. We thank you, oh God, for sisterhood and brotherhood. We thank you, God, for their, their life, their witness. Lord, I pray, oh God, that you forever bless them. Bless their hands. Bless wherever their foot may try. Bless, oh God, the things they desire in their hearts and have not even talked about it. Yes. 
but God, you know all about it. So God, as you, we leave this place, we pray that you cover us under your blood and that you protect us, oh God, from all hurt, harm, and danger. And so may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.